studying 1.4 on solving quadratic equations. So way back in your mathematics skills, we have um, the value of the discriminant will be dependent on your number of roots. So of course, when the discriminant is greater than zero, we have two real roots. Um, when the discriminant equals zero, we have one equ uh, two equal roots or one root. And when we have the discriminant that's less than zero, we can't take the square root of negative number. So in our mathematics, um, concepts, we will say that it has two unreal, uh, sorry, no real roots, okay. However, in extension two, because we have introduced a new number system to you guys, we can um, look at some more possibilities when we have two unreal roots, because we can express them using com complex numbers. All right. A, solve. Get squared plus 5x plus 8. Oh. Not equal to zero. <coughs> well, we will be setting equal to zero because we're finding x value. <coughs> okay, so how do we normally factorise a quadratic? Okay, the two numbers multiply to give 8, same two numbers add to give 5. Nope, so if we can't do this, what do we do? <laughs> Quadratic something or other. Alright, so x is minus b plus or minus the square root. b squared take away 4ac all over 2a. Okay, not just the third over 2a, everything is over 2a. Okay, we substitute. Okay, I'll just write down what negative 5 or squared is straight away. You can choose to do that if you want. Okay, so in mathematics, there's our problem, so that we can't take the square root of a negative number. However, in extension 2, we can manipulate that have some solutions. So what can I do to manipulate this? Okay, so remember square root of negative 7 is equal to square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1 using your third law. And we have uh, set um, at the start of the topic the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so that's how we write it. So, x is going to be negative 5 plus root 7 i on 2. Okay, technically we, um, sorry, when we're just considering the real and imaginary part of your numbers. Okay, that's how um, I've seen some places really particular about doing this. I guess it doesn't really matter in the long run. Because we can know what those mean. Okay, so of course we've got the plus and minus. So we have two complex roots, and that's what they look like because they have partly real parts and imaginary parts of the root. Alright, so we have also done, we've done factorising, so two numbers multiplied to give eight, same two numbers add to give five, that's one method of solving your quadratic. The second method is to use your quadratic formula, we'll um, spit out your solutions for you when you go through the um, concepts. What's the third, what's the, another way we can solve a quadratic equation that I've shown you in mathematics? Weird way, which is called the long way, the ugly long way. The ugly long way, which is also called um. <laughs> completing the square. Right, x squared plus five x um, plus eight equals zero. So what we're really doing is finding the roots for this quadratic by uh, making it equal to zero. Five, 
Right. So, to remember how to complete the square. All right, so this is an alternate way to solve for a quadratic. All right, so we need to complete the square by writing the number here that we can factorise in a perfect square, and also we're going to have that included in both sides. So we half, then square. Okay, so half that coefficient and square the result. Okay, to complete the square. Alright, so that means x um, plus 5 over 2, all squared. <coughs> okay, which is negative 8 plus 25 on 4, and negative 32 on 4 plus 25 on 4, which is negative 7 on 4. Okay, so this means x plus 5 over 2, or squared, plus 7 on 4 is equal to 0. Okay, so what's what happens when I do this? So x plus 5 on 2, or squared, take away 7i squared on 2, equal to 0. So what's i squared? Negative 1. Put the negative here, the negative times the negative is a. Introduce one in the mat. Oh, sorry. The help. No, I just introduced on a squared. You squared one of the things down there, didn't you? You squared the whole thing to get rid of the seven. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Seven's still there. No, I'm not saying you got, I'm saying you got rid of the square root. There is no square root seven, here yet. Square root of 7i over 2, 7i yeah. squared over 4, squared. Oh, okay, we're, okay, we're getting somewhere, yes. <laughs> we are getting somewhere. Alright, so, um, so we've got this in the form a squared, take away b squared, just about, over here. your a squared take away b squared is zero. We should remember how to factorise a squared take away b squared. Difference of two squares. Okay, so the rule a minus b, a plus b is zero. Okay, that's what we're doing. So x plus 5 over 2 um, plus greater 7i on 2. And we also have x plus 5 over 2 take away root 7i on 2. Think of zero.
Okay, so this part equals zero, that part also equals zero. So move everything else apart from the x onto the right hand side, and we have our two solutions there, which is the same two solutions as using your quadratic formula. Okay, so there's two ways you can answer these Giles questions. Okay, solving quadratic equation. Okay, but because you brave soldiers are doing extension too much, you're going to be looking at lots of different methods and uh, ways of doing things. Right? And I wouldn't be a good teacher if I wasn't co covering all walls. I won't necessarily cover them all, but I'll do as many as I can. Okay? Any question? What do you notice about the solution to the quadratic? What do you notice about the solution in respect to what we've done last lesson? There's two, yes. It's more specific. Oh, there's, uh, what's it called? The Z. What is it, what is it called? I've got it. Conjugate. They're conjugate solutions, aren't they? Okay, so the only difference here is the sign in the middle. So that means they are conjugate. That leads to a very, very important theorem, okay? So, all quadratic with real coefficients, okay? Only when the coefficients are real, okay? They can't be imaginary has to be real, has solution in conjugate pairs. Okay, that's a very important solution uh, result there. Okay, so in other words, if A plus BI is a solution to the quadratic, then A minus BI is also a solution to the quadratic. Okay. And we can use that concept above. So we have x take away z and x take away z, the conjugate of z, factorise, expand, and we get that following <coughs> result. Okay, so x take away z, x take away the conjugate. Okay, so in a sense you are going backwards. From here, so we have the conjugate pairs here and here. X take away both those values is equal to zero. So we're going backwards, right through there. Okay, so I'm going to use my foil to expand that. So x squared take away x sub prime take away x. Uh, so z conjugate um, plus z z prime. Uh, the conjugate, sir. Prime. Conjugate. Equals h squared take away z plus z conjugate of x plus z times z conjugate. Okay, so I've already taken the negative out here. That means the middle term is going to be positive. I've just swapped the order, uh, no biggie there. Alright, so z plus z conjugate equals what from the conjugate theorems we did last oh, lesson? 2x. Hey? Is it 2x? Not 2x. Oh, look. You're close. Oh, okay, yep. Right. Um, but what I'm getting at is to lots of the real part of it. Okay, because there's no imaginary part because we were using the x plus y i, so yes, you are right, but <coughs> while well, trying to get out of you that it's equal to two times the real part. Okay. Plus z z. Conjugate. Is it times by x still? Oh, yes. Okay, so we can use those results to do the next question. 
So you want to find the quadratic with solution with the roots, sorry. The roots five plus i and five minus i. So going backwards, so we've discovered roots from a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula and completing the square. So now we're going back in reverse. You are told the root. We need to now write down the quadratic equation. So how am I going to do this? I'm not going to put in this form, am I? So, x take away 5 plus i x take away 5 minus i Equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So using this result, um, it's going to be x squared. Take away two lots of the real part of x. Okay, so what's the real part of x? Five. five. So two times five is ten, so negative ten x. And z times z conjugate, what's the outcome for that? In using the conjugate theorems. x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared. Okay, so remember this was in the form. Um, x plus y i. That was a complex number form. <clears throat> okay, so don't get confused with this x here, which is what the solution is here. So it probably could treat it as an a plus b i. Okay, so z z conjugate is going to be a squared plus b squared. Okay, so it's going to be five squared plus one squared. Okay, plus twenty six. So that's quadratic. Okay, I think it's a solution. Okay, otherwise you need to go and expand using your foil. Okay, tidy it up and you'll get those numbers as a result. Now, what's the alternate way of doing answering that question? <clears throat> Thinking way back to your first topic you did in Potential 1. Do you have to go that far? Yeah, excellent. Okay. <laughs> so we go back to your um, quadratic, uh, so your polynomials. Okay, yep, so the sum of the roots, one at a time, okay, which equals two times the real part. And what was the two letters that was um, sum, yeah. Okay, so negative b on a, the so negative b on a is going to be um, negative 10 on 1. times the real part. Sum of the roots two a time. 
is okay. equal to x squared plus y squared, so this is something you need to work backwards on. Okay, so which is 5 squared plus 1 squared, which is 26, which is what, two letters? Okay, and this is of course ax squared plus bx plus c. So I've taken the negative out, that's an error, so that means b on a is going to be negative 10 on 1, and c on a is going to be 26 on 1. So a is 1, so we've got a, uh, sorry, x squared, take away 10x plus 26. So that's your alternate way you can answer that question. Right, question. Is that, is that where it's useful? Yep, one area where it's useful. One area. <laughs> one of many, many areas.